Okay, I don't think everybody understood the gravity of what occurred yesterday. That video that I put out about the Surgeon General letting the cat out of the bag. And I'm so glad that other people caught on to it. And look, this is the top thing. If you put Surgeon General in, in the YouTube search bar, at the top it's saying developing news. Fox News host Chris Wallace and Surgeon General Jerome Adams spar over pandemic shutdown. See, I didn't show y'all the rest of it. Chris Wallace starts crying like a little baby. I wanted to say a different word, but it didn't. Um, say, but, but, but. <laughs> so let's check it out. It was amazing. So if you didn't see that video, I'll, I'll go ahead and see. They put this crazy now, title on it saying this next week is gonna be our Pearl Harbor. Uh, you know, like so crazy. Like they wanted it to be this intense thing. And then we have Dr. Jerome Adams here, you know, Mr. Reason and Common Sense. Let's check out the whole thing. Surgeon General, Vice Admiral Jerome Adams. Dr. Adams, the U.S. is now reporting 30,000 new cases a day. And I want to put up a chart that shows the curve of cases in Italy and China, which have leveled off and are now going down, and the curve on the far right there, here in the U.S., which is still in the early stages and is still ha headed up sharply. Given Before they say anything, see, he can only say so many things, but I can say some things. After reading um, the many, many peer-reviewed journal articles and all of this research that we're able to get our hands on which I've gone through it's very obvious that our testing is a, is pretty dismal we're having up to an 80 percent false positive rate y'all if it was a false negative rate that would be concerning because that would mean people are positive but testing negative. On the other hand, we have false positives and they are now even admitting that even if you're getting a false positive or even just a concern, like if you go in the emergency room and say, I think I have this, they're going to put it down as the CDC states that they put this out yesterday. You can look for it. Um, it says that they're going to put it down as a positive case. So of course we're going to have this num this huge rise because no matter what, y'all, it's going to look like they're positive, but they're not. And even if we do look at the positive rates, it, it's like 90% of people that are having no symptoms which correlates very closely with false positives. On top of that, I haven't said anything about the Navy ship because it, it's a little bit controversial. You know, I understand the captain's concern, but no matter what, and every sailor needs to understand, they, they understand this, you cannot make our military look weak. The, um, I don't think the captain sent it out to public. I think somebody else released it. But either way, you even if you're having some tragedy situation on your ship, you don't want China and Russia to know that one of your aircraft carriers could very well have a big hole in it, if you know what I mean, okay? And that's why I haven't said anything about it. Many people have come to me and asked me about it. And unfortunately, the captain, I, I hate i hate to say that, but thats that, that was the right call. They had to let him go uh, for now. I, he's going to be back. But on top of that, y'all, they know. They know this. They know that we're getting false positives on people that took this year's flu vaccine 
And I can pretty much guarantee that almost all the people on that ship had a flu vaccine. So think about that. If they're doing corona testing on all these sailors that had the flu vaccine, they might not be having any kind of symptoms or anything, but they're going to test positive. That's already been proven. Okay, let's go ahead and go on. And the chorus of the disease in China and Italy and that we are weeks or months behind them, how bad is this epidemic going to be in America and how long will it last? Sorry, I have to stop it again. They keep saying this weeks and months behind everybody. How? We all got our first positive at the same exact time. How do they keep saying that we're weeks and months behind anybody? That that's not logical. It's just not logical. Well, it's tragically fitting that we're talking at the beginning of Holy Week because this is going to be the hardest and the saddest week of most Americans' lives, quite frankly. This is going to be our Pearl Harbor moment, our 9-11 moment, only it's not going to be localized. It's going to be happening all over the country. And I want America to understand that. But I also want them to understand that the public, along with the state and the federal government, have the power to change the trajectory of this epidemic. You mentioned it. Exactly. For their really aggressive mitigation efforts. Let's get on to it. But let's talk about mitigation because the president's top health advisors, including you, say the most important thing we can do, all of us, is to stay at home. And yet there are still Absolutely. nine states, there are still nine states with millions of Americans that still have not issued stay at home orders. President Trump was asked about that this week. Here he is. We'd leave it to the governors. Leave it to the governors because we have a 10th Amendment. It's bad enough that they're taking all our, our rights away. Our governors need to stand up to this. We have a 9th and 10th Amendment for a reason, y'all. If we just let them take it away for this, they'll take it away for everything. We've got states, and he's going to talk about Let me just let him talk. But Dr. Adams, the coronavirus is not a state issue. It doesn't follow or respect state borders. Uh, Dr. Fauci says he believes that there should be a national stay-at-home order. Okay. Is he wrong? Yes, he's wrong. Well, Chris, uh, it's important to understand that most people across the country are doing the right thing. Over 90% of the country is staying at home, and a good proportion, more than average, are staying home even in those nine states. Exactly. But the last time you and I talked, it was about opioids. Ooh. People don't know, but uh, I've run a state Department of Health. I've been involved in health for years, and diseases don't respect the state lines, but we live in a country uh, where we have a system of federalism. And when it comes to opioids, states have different rules and regulations exactly. and laws regarding treatment, regarding syringe service programs, as you and I have talked about. Uh, I actually put out a report on tobacco cessation <laughs> earlier this year, and we know that states have different laws there, and more people Let will die. Let me make die. this clear. This man is an American hero for what he's doing. See, he, he went with their little, their little nonsense in the beginning, but then he pulled out his Trump card. <laughs> he's like, look, I put this out. Uh, sorry, I interrupted. Regarding syringe service programs, as you and I have talked about, uh, I actually put out a report on tobacco cessation earlier this year, and we know that states have different laws there, and more people will die, even in the worst projections, from cigarette smoking in this country <laughs> than are going to die from uh, from coronavirus this year. And so uh, we always are struggling <laughs> with trying to get information out to guide people that we know uh, will help them be healthy with states' rights. But it's why we put out these 30 days to stop the spread <laughs> guidelines. These are essentially our national stay-at-home order, and we're working with governors to figure out their needs their desires. Uh, one more important point, the nine states that haven't yet um, put, done, done shelter in place orders are states that actually produce a large amount of our food. Exactly. So they're struggling with issues concerning what, how they can provide for the rest of the country to be able to stay at home. But exactly. right now, my, what, what I would say to those governors. You heard what he said? These states that haven't went on lockdown are our farmers. Will you want them to go on lockdown? You want to lock down the farmers? What do you think is going to happen? You want to lock down, uh, I mean, Louisiana's in a partial lockdown, but if you go around and look at it, it's really not. Because why? Because we are the pipeline of your oil and gas. 
what are you going to do without oil and gas to get food to places, to heat your home? You can't. You can't lock down an entire nation. It's silly. You can't lock down farmers. They're already having to waste 18 wheeler trucks loads of milk and beef because of this silliness. Like I've said before, millions more people are going to lose their lives and their livelihoods. Meaning their small businesses, their farms, their food because they're hungry. Because you can't get food to these, these shops. What are they going to do? You going to lock these farmers down? Lock truck drivers down? What kind of silliness is that? I mean, they talked about it here and said that they would have to have a 24-hour crew running the, the oil and gas refineries. They haven't implemented it yet. Luckily, my brother would be one of the ones that would have to do it. And, but you know how terrible that would be? This is not China. We have states' rights for a reason. Because every state does different things. Locking down New York, if you want to lock it down, lock it down. I don't live in New York. Whatever. That, unfortunately, that's, I mean, fortunately, that's a governor call. You lock down the farms? Do you realize how ignorant that would be? Because it wouldn't just be a couple of days. If you know anything about farming, you have to get those seeds into the ground at a certain time. You have to get the potatoes out of the ground at a certain time or you're going to lose all of your crops. We can't do that. The next seven to 10 days. But, but doctor, but Dr. Adams, <laughs> Listen, there's a big difference between opioids and, and cigarettes, which are something that people decide to use or not to use, and the coronavirus, which people catch. It's not a, an individual choice. And, and you know, when President uh, uh, Trump uh, uh, says uh, uh, that he's a wartime president. A wartime president. War Do you hear what he's saying? This is about saying this is a war. A war. It's all about war. This is how they are framing this. It's disgusting. Listen to this baby again. People catch. It's not a, a, it's and, and cigarettes, which are something we're going to be hitting our peak over the next the next seven to ten days. But, but doctor, but, but, but Dr. Adams, but, but, there's a big difference but, but. between opioids <laughs> and, and cigarettes, which are something that people decide to use or not to use. And oh, really? The, really? No, because 75,000 people a year die by taking their medications as prescribed. We're not talking about the number of heroin deaths. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Chris. Coronavirus, which people catch. It's not a, an individual choice. And, and, you know, when President Trump says that he's a wartime president, during World War II, FDR didn't say, well, it's up to each state to decide what to do. He mobilized the nation again. Do you hear this, man? Do you hear this? And I hate when people say, oh, you can trust Fox News. No, you can't. You can't trust any of these fools. They're all working for the banking cartels. End of story. Full stop, as they say. <laughs> Think about this, how much of a baby this man is acting. But, but this is not World War II. This isn't the Spanish flu. This is not what they want it to be, and they're freaking out. I honestly believe 100% in my heart that they wanted this to kill a whole lot more people. But they see the nonsense going on. They, you know, the normie people... We, you know, we caught it first off. We're like, come on, this is horse manure. This is silly. But they're still trying to sell it to us as if millions of people are going to die. It's insane. And for all of you people still putting out this nonsense about China, who, I'm not going to, I want to say who cares. But y'all, seriously, when you put out this information saying China had way more deaths, okay, yeah, maybe they did. But when you're putting that information out, you're scaring people here 
to say that we're going to have the same situation. Yeah, I, I would bet money that China lied about their deaths. I'd put a lot of money on it if I had it. But you got to think about this. Those people in China live right on top of each other. You cannot compare China's little... The, the things that they do to middle America. Maybe, maybe New York, but you cannot compare that to what's going on here. So just forget about it. Stop even talking about what China did. You're making it worse. I understand what you're doing and, and you, you think that you're putting out good information and it is, you know, but not right now. When you're saying that, oh, tens of thousands more people died in China. When you're saying that, you're making Americans think, oh my gosh, that's going to happen here too. No, it's not. We live in the suburbs. The majority of us live in the dang suburbs or in the country. We don't live in little boxcars stacked on top of each other. We're not sharing air. We don't need to be locked down. You go outside, ride a bike, go for a run. It's silly, y'all. Comparing the U.S. to China is just silly. Why not a national stay-at-home order? Because we're not communist China, Chris. The, the coronavirus doesn't recognize states' rights. So does the federal analogy really work here? Well, Chris, um, I know a week ago <laughs> is forever in coronavirus time, but I would remind people... <laughs> this guy in coronavirus time and he's right he's being the only one with some common sense these days and he's the surgeon general and people want to argue with him we've got all of these non-doctor people that are tied to the pharmaceutical industry that are wanting to be the face of what we should and shouldn't be doing like people like bill gates why are people listening to a software engineer over the Surgeon General. Please, please tell me. How is that even logical? It's because he's not saying what they want them to say, like national lockdown. That uh, it was just a week ago when the idea of a federal quarantine uh, for the New York City area was being floated and Governor Cuomo said that would be like declaring war on the states. Uh, the governors are intensely protective of their right and, and rightly so exactly. to be able to decide what's best for their states. And we're going to do everything we can as scientists and as physicians, as, as medical professionals to help them understand what we think the right thing is for them to do. Uh, and so I just want everyone to know that from a national perspective, the Surgeon General is saying no matter where you are, stay <laughs> at home. At least give us a, a, week, a week or two if you can. A we week. want you to do it for 30 days. But even in those nine states, g give us what you can so we can get this peak and start to come down on the other side. Dr. Adams, for days, <laughs> President Trump has been talking about hydroxychloroquine as a possible treatment for people with the coronavirus. Uh, but yesterday, in his briefing, he took this it. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He, this is amazing. This Sur Surgeon General, man, I'm telling you, American hero. I don't care what you say. This guy blew it out the water I mean and you can even see it it you just search Surgeon General and <laughs> they even have one of these goofy things this is amazing this is amazing we thought it was gonna be buried luckily people caught it and saw saw oh wait the Surgeon General the Surgeon General not Bill Gates not Bill Gates the Surgeon General. So please tell me why anybody in their right mind is listening to Bill Gates and his 33% silliness. Mandatory tests for all Americans? I mean, that's so ridiculous. Or you don't work? Oh, I'm gonna have to look at that. I mean, that's how silly this is. Kentucky is saying that they're going to put um, ankle bracelets on people that have coronavirus. Y'all, I mean, you see the silliness? 
trying to find that. Y'all need to see what Bill Gates said. Because it's so ridiculous. But that's who people want to listen to. It makes no sense. He's a software engineer. And we're going to... They put him on every dang channel. Every dang... Uh, oh, yeah, let's listen to Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. And then you put the Surgeon General up and he tells you some truth. And people are like, oh, wait, hold up. Bill Gates and the powerful ID2020 Alliance, along with the Rockefeller Foundation, want to significantly reduce the population and inject their digital ID vaccination inside every human being on the planet. If you refuse his vaccination, Gates wants your movement and freedom restricted. Listen for yourself and join the resistance. You know, it's so important to get not just hundreds of millions, but literally billions of those vaccines because this is a global problem. And although the U.S. has got the most cases right now, as time goes on, the developing countries where isolation is more difficult and the health system is very weak, uh, sadly, they're most likely to experience uh, the most pain of all as, as this goes global. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. That only happens after the numbers have peaked and are going down a lot and getting down to an absolute level. Uh, you know, there are some good things happening. The work on a vaccine, although that probably will take 18 months, that's going full speed ahead. Our foundation is funding that. We're looking at getting back. You see, his foundation is funding this. Why are we listening to somebody that has massive money to gain from such a thing? He doesn't care about anybody. Did you hear what he just said? He said, if we do really great with these vaccines, we can lower lower the population by 10 to 15 percent how can that be taken in any other way and he said reproductive health meaning abortions vaccines to everyone in the world so in, in the in the long run that we're looking at getting vaccines to everyone in the world so in, in the in the long run that we're looking at getting vaccines to everyone in the world eventually what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's what? a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world where you'll have some countries that won't have it under control, sadly. You want to completely block okay. off the ability for those you know, people to go there and come back and That's move insane. around. What does opening up look like? You know, which activities have, like schools, have such benefit and can be done in a way that the risk of transmission is very low? Yeah. And which activities like mass gatherings uh, may be, in a certain sense, more optional. And so until you're widely vaccinated, those may not uh, come back uh, at all. You hear Eventually, this? what we'll have to have is... He's saying that he doesn't want you going to weddings. He doesn't want you going to church. He doesn't want you having birthday parties until you have your little ID card to say that you have been vaccinated. Don't be confused. That's what he is absolutely saying. Certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world where you'll have some countries that won't have it under control, sadly. Sadly. Like he cares. In his own words, Bill Gates wants to make literally billions of vaccines get vaccines to everyone in the world, demand mandatory vaccination certifications before anyone can travel, limit mass gatherings until you're vaccinated, reduce the population by 10 to 15% by doing a good job with vaccines, forcing government subsidized dangerous chemical cocktails of cell altering DNA into the veins of the public without their consent. 
is nothing short of unjust and evil. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, and so that, what we, I know people are going to say, well, what can we do? What can we do? Stop freaking out and come up with a plan. St call your governors. Tell them y you don't agree with this silliness. You know, I mean, this is all silliness, y'all. But instead, people are corona shaming their neighbors, their friends, their family. I mean, I see it all day. What is wrong with these people? Sorry, I'm trying to get out of here. Create him with the creator. I mean, it, it's so silly. Oh, and that video was from High Impact Flicks and Charles Marlowe. Great job, guys. Uh, Y'all sub to their channels if you're not Charles. Charles, And um, I'm sure most of you are High Impact. Um, John X Army put up this from the jail I think it's just a complete hoax sorry I think John knows that by now but um you have to if you're not yeah sub to Ann 411 too she puts out great information slam it. she puts together all of the clips to the hospital from ship mercy CBS 2 stuff. died in that bizarre Kate great work she always does great work but y'all we have to work together Stop thinking that, oh, oh, it's something, it, it, something else is going to happen. Yeah, something else is going to happen, as in Bill Gates is going to try to lock you down and have everybody vaccinated, because he can, because so many people are living in fear. That's so silly. That's silly, y'all. Straight silly. Um, I, I don't even know what what else to say but y'all have a wonderful day like share and subscribe and as of right now i feel that he is an american hero for what he did absolutely the surgeon general i'm speaking up all right bye guys